it's my pleasure to welcome on board Armin Sajai from Sciences Co and the European Project Shock, Social Sciences and Humanities Open Cloud. She'll be giving us insights into ethnic and migrant minority uh, survey and discovery in the CESDA um, data catalogue. So the floor is yours, um, Amy. Thanks again. It's good to have you back with us. Thanks. Thanks, Stephanie, for the warm welcome. And I'm very happy to be here and represent Shock, specifically the Ethnic and Migration Studies Data Community team of this project. Um, what I will be doing is actually discussing the, the SESTA data catalog in relation to the EMM survey registry, which is not only an output of the Shock project, but more importantly, a free service displaying metadata that promotes the discovery of surveys, specifically those that are quantitative and examining ethnic and migrant minorities, or EMMs for short, integration and or inclusion. Um, and given that Demetra has already provided quite a comprehensive and clear overview of what the SESTA data catalog is, I'm going to start by giving a similar overview of the EMM survey registry so you have a better sense of what this service is um, in relation to the SESTA data catalog. And then I'll actually move on to discussing how the EMM survey registry and SESTA data catalog are not really competing services, but rather complements to one another. So let me go ahead and introduce the EMM survey registry to all of you. So first, the EMM survey registry is a service that has been created by the ethnic and migration studies data community for the ethnic and migration studies data community. And what I mean by this is that various stakeholders of quantitative survey data on the integration and inclusion of EMMs, which means producers, users, curators, and managers of this data came together formally through three different projects, SHOC, ethnic survey data and fair ethnic quant to address a shared goal, improving how this data can be accessed, shared and reused. And they then determined that one concrete way to meet this goal would be creating and launching a discovery tool dedicated to quantitative survey data on the integration and inclusion of EMMs, as well as one shaped by the FAIR principles, which as many of you may already know, stands for findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable. So a natural next question is what exactly does the EMM survey registry do and offer? So first, this service was designed and conceptualized to be like a live census of existing quantitative surveys conducted either at the national, subnational, or international level on EMM's integration and their inclusion. And more precisely, it's aiming to cover surveys fulfilling the following criteria. It has to be quantitative and sample based. It should normally be conducted since January 2000. It's been undertaken in one of 35 countries, primarily in Europe, and these 35 countries actually correspond to formal country participants of the project ethnic survey data. Um, surveys also have to examine at least one dimension of integration or inclusion, and it also has to include a sizable number of EMM respondents. Um, and by sizable, we're basing this off of the achieved sample size of a survey and different sample uh, size thresholds are in place based on the country in which the survey took place, the territorial coverage, so whether it was a national or a local uh, survey, um, and the actual target population of the survey, whether it was um, targeted specifically to just EMM respondents or it was a general population survey that included uh, EMM respondents as part of its overall sample. Um, it should be noted that this inclusion criteria was carefully constructed so that the service would not replicate or overlap too much with existing services. So to give you an example, there are actually other services in place already that try to document and take stock of qualitative research on uh, migration. Um, and then additionally, this inclusion criteria allows the EMM survey registry to capture as many surveys as possible, but without including those that may provide very limited insights about EMM's integration and or inclusion. So because the EMM survey registry is operating like this live census of existing quantitative surveys on EMM's integration and or inclusion, the service can also be viewed as, as, as a single access point to quality information about each of the surveys the, the service covers. So for each survey included in the EMM survey registry, we actually provide detailed, informative, and structured information, which we call metadata, and they're compiled using existing sources that um, are available for the survey. So that would include things like the technical documentation, the data sets, questionnaires, publications, and reports that um, exist for the survey. And all the metadata uh, are compiled using a standardized procedure, which entails using a 200 plus uh, variable metadata schema so that the same type of information is being captured for each and every survey. 
And then in order for the metadata to eventually be published and made freely accessible on the EMM survey registry, they have to undergo a rigorous and multi-step quality control process. And this ensures that for each survey, the metadata provided is coherent and logical and allows anyone who looks at it to really get a good sense of what the survey is about. And to ensure that the, the EMM survey registry can truly facilitate discovery and learning via the metadata it provides for each of the surveys, the, the service has been set up um, with various user-friendly functionalities that, that are focused on making it uh, easy for any user to navigate all the surveys and their metadata. Um, and these functionalities include simple and advanced filtering, and the filters that we provide are actually those that were selected through several rounds of testing. So we're really including items that people who work in research as well as policy-oriented uh, spaces uh, deemed were really most helpful in terms of pinpointing the specific surveys of interest to them. We also provide keyword search, sorting of the surveys, um, and then access to the actual metadata for each survey in an abbreviated form. Um, a full form and then an XML format that's in compliance uh, with DDI Codebook, which is a metadata documentation standard. And in terms of the actual state of the EMM survey registry today, it is live and available in beta version at the URL listed in the slide. And I believe uh, my colleague Meredith Wynn has also dropped the, the URL into the chat. Um, and so this beta version uh, is actually already offering all of the desired core functionalities of the service and already has a substantive metadata collection. And specifically about the metadata collection, the EMM survey registry currently covers more than 1400 surveys from 31 different countries. So those that are in orange on this map to the right of the slide. And the metadata for these surveys have largely been contributed by participants of our data community. Um, and the metadata collection we have is constantly growing and in the coming months we're going to be adding the countries that are in blue and now we're also now partnering with data producers that are not formally participating in our data community through the three projects um, so that they can actually contribute metadata directly to the emm survey registry using an online form that's made available through the emm survey registry's back end so with this overview of the EMM survey registry, hopefully now it's a bit clearer in terms of how it might contrast to the SESTA data catalog. But I did actually want to spend some time in drawing out kind of similarities as well as distinctions between the both because I think it will help in understanding how you really leverage these two, two services jointly. So uh, let's, I guess we can go ahead and look at kind of the main features of both of these services. So both the EMM survey registry and the SESTA data catalog have been created by trusted experts. So for the former, it's the Ethnic and Migration Studies Data Committee, and for the later, latter, it's SESTA and the SESTA service providers. Um, additionally, both of these services are similar in that they offer detailed, informative, structured, and quality metadata through a single access point for each of the items included in their service. Um, and obviously the main difference being that the EMM survey registry is just specific to existing quantitative surveys on EMM's integration and our inclusion, whereas the SESTA data catalog um, is showcasing data collections held by SESTA service providers. Um, another kind of key similarity is that these services are inclusively designed so that really anyone who might be interested in the research that is captured by these services can, can engage with it. Um, and obviously, as I mentioned before, the EMM survey registry would be appropriate um, for prospective users of quantitative surveys on EMM's integration and inclusion, whereas the SESTA data catalog um, is for the data collections held by SESTA's uh, service providers. And then finally, the, these two services um, facilitate very much in a sustainable way the discovery and subsequent reuse of the research they cover. And it's because they're both services, as I mentioned already, backed by trusted experts, and they're both services that allow for its metadata collection to organically grow and easily be updated. So it's really representative of the existing research that's going on in their respective kind of areas of focus. So to conclude, I just wanted to now um, go through kind of um, potential scenarios in which you might be able to leverage these two uh, uh, services. So one scenario is imagine a researcher is interested in reusing some kind of existing migration data, but they might not be sure about what kind of, of, of migration data is best suited for their needs. For this person, then they could explore both the SESTA data catalog and the EMM survey registry to maximize the number of data sets to be discovered. And that's because these two services are covering different types of data um, with some overlap when it comes to um, quantitative surveys on migration. 
Um, another use case example would be a researcher who knows that they want to reuse migration data from a SESTA service provider, but maybe isn't sure which specific data collection is best suited for their needs. Um, in this particular scenario, the individual could explore first the SESTA data catalog to identify potential data collections to use and imagine that they find via the SESTA data catalog, the Austrian Immigrant Survey 2016, a data collection that is housed uh, with OSTA, which is a SESTA service provider. And then to actually get additional information and insights about this survey, the individual could then consult the metadata that's been compiled for this exact survey in the EMM survey registry. And so they can really make an informed decision of whether or not the survey that they found originally through the SESTA data catalog is appropriate for their specific needs. Um, and then one final scenario, so we can move away from a researcher, maybe someone who works in the policy space, a policy analyst at an in international organization. They're interested in reusing quantitative survey data on migration, but again, isn't sure which surveys are best serve suited for their needs. So they could then consult the EMM survey registry, since this is very much targeted to quantitative surveys, and then they could consult the SESTA service or the SESTA data catalog if it happens to be surveys that are also being held by a SESTA service provider. So that was, I guess, what I wanted to present in terms of how both the EMM survey registry and the SESTA data catalog are promoting discovery um, and how you really can leverage both of these tools um, because of, of the way that they have been designed. Um, thank you.